Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindface and the Therapist, man, with a new episode to you. I'm Demetrius. And I'm Celia. We've been together for 28 years, married for 22 or 23, but who's counting? And today's episode is about taking things too personal. So, Celia, start us off with people taking stuff too personal and what, what we mean by taking stuff too personal. Why the mic sound so loud? Because you are loud. I'm talking about you. Um... We were having a conversation about what is his name? What is who name? I don't know about the name, but the thing is, is about people taking things too personal, especially on social media. It's like people want to feel like you're talking about them, but you have no idea they exist. You know what I'm saying? Let's, Are you talking like, about people that you don't know? Yeah, you don't know, but yeah, they like they feel like you're talking about them. But yeah, because that's why I guess this society is so quick to counsel this counsel culture. Because they take everything so personal. It's like, can you laugh? Where's the humor at? It's like humor is gone. It's just everything so serious. Like, Well, honestly, I think because people sometimes don't have anything to do, right? Um, going back to what I was saying, the conversation started because I was talking about the rapper. I don't know his name. Someone sent me a DM of a young lady committing suicide and... I, you know, stuff like that for me, I don't like to see stuff like that because I have compassion for people. Like I have a heart for people. So sometimes when I see stuff, like, for example, I had a kid that, uh, I was his therapist in high school and just randomly, it was crazy. Cause I asked my son about another kid, but he went to school with my client and he actually thought I was talking about him, but I wasn't even talking, I was talking about somebody completely different. He was arguing with me. Oh, no, that's the kid's name. I'm like, nah, I don't, you know, I'm talking about someone else. He's like, but anyways, he just passed away. And it was so crazy how everything like evolved, like me knowing his sister, never knowing that was his sister. And she came to my office and basically told me he OD'd. And like that messed me up for like a week. Like I had to literally tell myself to get out of that mindset. So why did you take it personal? I didn't take it personal. So, so I didn't put myself up? because I have a heart for people. And that's the conversation where we're, we're going about. So I was talking about the young lady who committed suicide. And I was telling Demetrius that I told someone don't send me stuff like that because I have a heart for people. Like I feel people's pain when someone is hurting, like it bothers me. And so it's one thing to see things from a different perspective, right? And so many times, like you've heard on our previous podcast, I think we were talking about when I would tell Demetrius to take stuff down, not that I'm personalize it, but I always try to see all sides of the fence. I've always tried to see it from other people's perspective, not just my own. So it's a difference between seeing others perspective and personalizing it and taking it on as if it was you. Well, well, I'm saying personalize it because yet yeah, you've seen this and don't know these people, but yet it's affecting you in your day. So I say that's taking it personal. Okay. So wait a minute. So if you saw someone. Yeah, I see. Harmed, I see. I see it daily, but I don't take none of it personal. None okay. of it. None of it. Taking it personal. Okay. Let's, let's put it in perspective. So taking it personal would be like. I would never, and you're taking it on like you're putting yourself in that person's shoes. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it's it's a bad thing when it impairs functioning. But it's a difference when you have a heart. Everybody has different gifts. You gotta have a heart, but when you when you constantly bringing it up, you, I feel like you taking it personal. No, okay, with you the with the kid for a week, that was my client. So it wasn't like this was just some random. Okay, that's stranger. okay. I understand like, that. I that was some kid. type of attachment there. But people that you don't know from nothing off the internet and taking it personal. That's no, what we're I talking think you about. Have compassion. I don't think compassion you should, is you should, one thing. But I don't taking think you, stuff personal that don't, you do, you don't know these people and it's affecting your think day. You that's, should allow it to continuously affect your day. But for me to be in the field that I, I'm in and for it not to affect me, I would basically think you shouldn't be in this field because to be a therapist, you have to have compassion for people. Not to say that it should impair your functioning to where you're thinking about it all the time. 
you got to think like this. I'm in session with clients that I hear stuff that would blow people's mind. Right. And so to hear that when I'm in a session, I'm in a session. When I go home, you know, I don't bring it home. I check out like I disconnect, but there are certain stories in session that I've heard that it affected me. So there are certain stories that maybe I shouldn't have read the letter to her boyfriend. I think that's what messed me up, but there are certain things that, because it, that affect me because then I'm thinking like, dang, you know, and I'm just analyzing it, analyzing the thought process, trying to think about, you know, what was going through her head. What? So that's my mindset. And yes, I have to tell myself, Sydney, turn it off and separate, not to the point where I'm going to be crying. Well, there's times I didn't cry, but at the end of the day, and also turned around and pray for them and their family too, because I just feel like, you know, you and I are different in the sense of, I'm not going to say you're cold, but I don't let stuff. I don't personalize stuff. I get a lot of crazy graphic content and I'm not going like, oh my gosh, dang. But sometimes you do need to be like, oh my gosh. Sometimes you do need to be like, dang, like maybe I shouldn't post this or dang. Maybe if somebody saw like, we're not going to say. I don't post it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but some of the stuff is real graphic and, but I don't, it doesn't affect me. I don't know. I guess because. Dylan has seen it okay. so much. Oh, I'm glad you said this. It I'm glad you said this. Like so that. you said, why are people so personalized? Personal? I don't think you should person. I don't think you should hop on people's statuses, arguing with them about their life. That type of stuff is crazy because it's none of your business. People say, well, they shouldn't have put it on there. I'm not going to get personally in your life. It, it, it just, it's not that serious. But I want to go back to what you said. In society today, too many people take things personal. To me, in my opinion, in society today, People are desensitized to where when they do see something, there is no compassion. That's why you can watch a 16 year old kid knock out a, six, a 60 year old woman you know and still a person. No, you know and what? Not Hold care. on, I got it. Because the perfect thing happened to me the other day. I posted this. And you're saying des- desensitized, but I think they pick and choose what they desensitize. It was a video of this blind lady singing. And I said something about, um, I said, the caption said, um, I love the eye contact she's giving the audience. Yet everybody was pissed off and personalized it, just That's really different. upset. That's but yet different. they have no problem seeing a black man get murdered on the street, a person getting beat up. But yet you were you you everybody's okay. upset because I said she's giving great eye contact to the audience. It's like people pick and choose. Of what? Well, I think that's just nitpicking. I think there's a difference when someone not being able to take a joke. But then you also got to understand, too. And that's what I was saying. Where's the humor at? But then you got to also understand, is the joke whose expense is it at? It wasn't wasn't at the expense because the person that posted the video wanted people to um, point out the eyes. That's why they made a video like that. So there's a difference between a joke and then there's a difference between seeing okay for example i remember you know a family member told me that they you know well, hold on not to cut you because this just popped in my mind it's what? the difference from a joke and bullying somebody but nobody felt like chris rock was wrong for picking on jada in the audience like i said people pick and choose well okay now let me circle back to that because you're gonna make me forget so basically they were saying that like they're friends was beating up a homeless person and to me I got mad because at the end of the day it's like we are so desensitized to you know having compassion for people that we don't I don't never want to become to the point where I see something and I don't feel something like I'm like hollow I don't ever want to become that person you know I don't want to ever be the person where I'm crying and it's affecting my everyday life but but look I'm that person in real life not on social media you know what I'm saying? Like, if I see somebody getting jumped on the street, I'm the type I'm going to help. But on social media, that's a different story. You can't do nothing. Your comment doesn't change nothing. Okay, but we're going back to what I was saying about the girl that basically committed suicide, and it, it bothered me. Just her note alone when she said, life is overrated. It made me think of, you know, some people are here but, and will never fulfill the gratification of life. It was going to bother you why I read it. That's the thing. I didn't know what they were sending me. And that's why I sent them a message and say, hey, don't send me stuff like this. Because I have a heart for people. And there's certain stuff that if I see or if I read, it is going to bother me. And I know that. That's why I don't be on social media like that all the time. Because you got to understand, again, to be in my field, 
for me to be disconnected, to not have a heart for people, I'm definitely in the wrong field. But going back to what you said about Jada, I always go to intent, you know, was the intent because, okay. You could say a joke and that's why I always tell people at whose expense are you telling the joke? Because I don't think consciously he was thinking I'm being malicious when I'm telling this joke, right? I think he thought, you know, it would just come off as a joke. And that's why I have a heart for people. And I always have to be, always try to be mindful of perspective of, okay, this may be funny to me. You know, this may be entertaining to me, but is this entertaining or funny to the other person? You're not going to think about that. I'm not. Exactly. So then why do you feel like they should think that basically he was wrong? I don't think he was wrong. I think it was a misjudgment of a joke. But I don't think he stood up there and was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to maliciously say this about her. This man had no idea she had alopecia. She was going through what she was going through. But that's why you. But he uh, did. He did. How do you? Because they, they old friends and used to hang out. So it came out that he did know that health out. issues. You have people you hang out with and they don't know anything about me. It's not like this man is probably sitting with. Well, besides the point. Yeah, because let's not go there. Who like, sits there and like, oh, yeah, my yeah. wife did it. Like, you, you're talking about how people can take shit personal and, and put their self in something like somebody's talking directly to them. I mean, I mean like, say you post a meme and. Somebody just strolled and feel like, oh, wait, shit, they talking about me. Fuck you. Y'all mind, you know what I'm saying? Now they pissed off because it touches them. If, it's if, just like, okay, oh, man. But if someone they is throwing subliminal. If like, something is, okay, if somebody's writing or reading something and they take it personal like it's about them, that's because there's an insecurity. Like, I tell people this all the time when I'm dealing with women or females with self-esteem issues. The only way, if somebody called me ugly, that's laughable to me, right? Because I look at myself in the mirror every day. I know what I look like. I know I'm not ugly. But if somebody tells you you're ugly and it makes you feel some type of way, because in reality, deep down, no, deep down inside, some of that of what they're saying you think is true about yourself. So they're only validating or confirming what you already think. And so when somebody writes something on social media that you respond or react to like that is because it's something within you that already feels like it's confirmation. Because if somebody says something that you don't feel like applies to you, it's not going to resonate with you. You're true, not going to care. True. Well, what do you think? Why? The reason why people take it personally. I just said it because there's something internally. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Yeah, there's, Let me give you a coin on that one day. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? You always got jokes. I got sidetracked. So then you heard what I said. I, yeah, I heard that basically something inside of them feel like they ugly. So when somebody make is dressing something about ugly, they it touches them. Yeah, because if it didn't apply to you, you wouldn't care. It's stuff people say that I'd be like, yeah, okay, it don't apply to me. And even if you feel that way or say that, okay, you bougie. Okay, I think I'm very down to earth. You you know you think you be, okay. You know what I'm saying? This is yes. I don't take it personal because you know I know that's not a reflection of me. It's not confirmation for me because I already know who I am. So it's, it's basically you need some self confidence. If you have self confidence, whatever people say, it's like they say, um, "I'm verbal, you glue everything you say, bounce off me, stick to you." Yeah, I just think too, and then you got to think like this too. It's two different type of people on social media. You know, there's certain people that's looking for entertainment and positivity, and then you got some people that just, you know, they don't have anything better the to trolls, do with their time. The trolls. I, I, and the, those are the people that I feel bad for because for a grown man to make a troll page and, and, and talk shit to other people behind a fake page, I feel sorry for you. But this is the you. thing. I'm not going to even respond to a fake page because if you're not confident enough exactly. to talk to me behind a real page with a real photo, with a real identity, that tells me you're not even confident enough to speak to me based on from from... For me to know who you exactly. really are. So exactly. why would I even waste my... That's a joke to me within itself. And that's what I'm saying. You Somebody had put like uh, something. Do y'all remember when she used to be a doctor? I'm like, used to be. Okay. You can't used to be something. But you went and did it behind a fake page because you didn't want anyone to know it was you. To me, that's like cowardly. So exactly. it, it, it's not going to even get a reaction out of me. What well, I gonna get a reaction out of me anyways, because at the end of the day, I know what I am. I know what I've accomplished. I know my credentials. I know my degrees. So it really doesn't matter. It don't. But yeah, you have to have compassion. So 
I don't like when you say, oh, well, you know, um, you're personal. No, I'm not personalizing it. I have a heart. It's a difference. Okay, point made. Everybody, y'all get that. It's the difference between compassion, having a heart, and taking things personal. Yeah, it's completely different. I mean, I would want someone to see something and be like, dang, just a little bit of their heart is moved. How do you think things are changed? Things are not changed with people that don't care. Things are changed. Initiatives happen. Activists take you know, now, now, you, since when, you, since when it's something that change. resonates with their heart, okay, their now, compassion. Yeah, because I see a lot of people do compassionate things and like they do stuff. Um, and show it. They do stuff. Yeah, and show it. Like that's for the homeless compassion. and feeding the compassion. homeless. But why? It's a double standard no, because you compassion. can inspire somebody else to do that's something. That's not compassion. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's a double sided story. Okay, let, let me tell you something. I'm not going to say that it's not compassion. I misspoke. So let me say this. When you're doing it to be seen, because I do a lot of stuff people would never know about, right? But it's between me and that person. But when you do stuff to be seen, you have to question your motive. True. Am I doing this because I want recognition or am I doing this because I'm, because let me but tell you something. sometimes it's not about recognition. It's about inspiring the next person to do something. Okay. So let's, for example, homeless guy, like two weeks ago, told me he was hungry. Come on. I'm about to buy you something to eat. Do I need to pull out my camera for that? I mean, no. But if you want to inspire somebody else to do it, I don't care. Listen, you know what listen, I'm saying? listen, listen. I don't. But care. you say change. No, Where's no, no, the, no, no. I mean, no, no, yes, no. change can start with yourself, me, but you also you inspire, ignite okay, a flame the and start change. See, the people in the in the the Panera Bread that saw me take out my car and pay for this homeless guy to eat, they were inspired. They should have been inspired. If they not, they probably wasn't. But my point is, the people that were there in this moment, right? Jesus is my example, even though there wasn't social media back in the day, but he never went out and broadcasted what he did. Cause this is my thing. He, you, but he did, listen, he did it in a group of people so they could go spread the word. You so know now what? we utilize social media so we can no, say spread no, the same word. No, let, you, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep cutting like, me like, off. Shit. <laughs> you keep cutting me off and not let me say what I'm going to say. The thing is when you walk with integrity and based on your character, you won't have to show video because people will hear about you based on your good deeds. People, people have heard about me before I even met met them before I even walked in the room and they ever laid eyes on me because of people have told them about me and the type of person I was. So inspiration can come in many ways. But but how many people? You could reach That's way more point. people. Of, it's but, a new age of time. Okay, this is what I'm saying. It's a new to, age of that time. That goes back to what are you doing it for? So I'm doing it because out the goodness of my heart because this man was hungry. This is back. I don't in, care not if you're but this inspired because I'm is, not doing it to try to inspire. Times has change. Times has change. If you don't get involved with the time changing, it's like back in the day when Jesus, of course, they didn't have cell phones and text. Okay, let's get spread away the from words. Jesus. Okay. Well, and back in your days and when um they didn't have, they had pagers. But so now we got the internet. And you could reach so many more people and inspire them. Like, damn, she fed the homeless. I'm about to go feed the homeless around my corner. So sometimes it's, it, it could help. No, sometimes more it people. can help. Sometimes it can help. Let's say like you had a campaign to feed 5 million people or five people. Like the, the dude that and um, that was cutting the hair and, and doing motivational, like, I guess, speeches, speaking to the people he was cutting the hair. That's inspirational, right? This is what he does. So I'm not saying every time somebody is being filmed. No, no, I'm saying if you're doing it every single time, that's like, come on, you you doing it like. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know saying. what I'm saying? Because like, I'm getting to the point of basically everybody, all, all you all you do is post negativity and this and that. But when you post something positive like that, all they about is the negative comments of why are you filming yourself? Why are you doing this? But yet he's doing something positive of feeding the homeless community. But yet people still want to be negative about was it. Was that just a video or something? No, it was. I mean, it was some old videos, but at the end of the day, every video is some positivity. People always want to find and pick at something and complain about. That's because, again, that's an inner issue. You're always negative. That's mindset. Because everything you, I don't know. It's just like I see social media. Somebody can have something positive, and it's like somebody. This is like what three weeks ago when the the lady on social media kept trying to. Um, like antagonize me to get me to go back and forth oh, with her. Yes, like, yeah. God bless you. I ain't got time for this. Like, yes, and yeah. kept tagging me into like, girl, she, she I don't went, even have time for <laughs> this. She went high and I was about to go low and I was waiting for her to say something because, woo, them lips, boy. <laughs> yeah, but see, I, I can't, I don't even have the energy 
to go there with you. And then what you're saying is so foolish and it don't even make sense. And that's what I'm saying. Some people want to basically they bait thrive you into, off, they thrive yeah, off bait you into arguments. So it's like, girl, I don't even have time for you for this. This is crazy. That's I'm like, just delete the post blocker because I don't I don't have time for it. And and that's one thing I love about social media. You have the option to hit the block button. Like, I don't have to see what you're doing. You don't have to see what I'm doing. Just get off my page and keep it moving. Hey man, that's a coin. Look, some of y'all utilize that block button. If they too much positivity coming down your timeline, you don't want to see it. Hit that block button. The crazy thing is when you post something on Grindface and they'll go all the way to my page and like look for a random something and then like, dude, you did all that for what? You got to love the internet though. Shout out to all the trolls that be trolling me. I appreciate y'all engagement. Thank you. Well, let's get back to um general topic of taking things personal. Even, we could go even go to real life. I mean, what we go social real media life. is real life. I mean, yeah, but you know, let's talk about something like personal, like in real life. Of uh, when family members put stuff on social media and people think it's about we, them. But then we could go there with family. But then, but it revolves back to social media. I guess everything today's time okay, revolves we'll talk, back well, to social what else? media. Well, then you what know else? What Not necessarily. I think it depends on how you live your life because social media doesn't. It's probably like a five percent part of my life. I think it just depends on you. Okay, so what what you got in, in something personal that takes the ninety five other percent of your life? I think even in the sense of like you let's know, do business. No, no, no. We'll get to business later. I'm just I want to touch bases on this. Let's say, oh, for example, I get this all the time. People be like, oh, your wife is mean, or people think I'm arrogant, or they think um, I'm a bitch, or a they- bitch. Just say, <laughs> Some, sorry to the viewers that can't spell. Well, I just said it for y'all. Thank you. Or, you know, they always have like, oh, she has an attitude. And it's like, you're you're personalizing that I have something against you. But why that just can't be my personality. I'm not the type like to just go into a crowd of people and start running my mouth. I've never been like that. I always observe. I'm always quiet. I'm always to myself. If I rock with you, know you personally. Or you have better Yes, you I, better can, I can validate that because we be in serious. And then that's why I like her around me because she would sit back and, and, and analyze and watch everybody's movements and everything. She ain't that time's going to be all up in your face and all that. No, the only way you'll be better off getting a conversation with me is one-on-one. But people need to, you know, look at it from, again, another perspective and stop always personalizing when someone is quiet or when someone is not talking or they probably you, just feel like you being anti-social, but what makes, well, but why you gotta be social? And that's just what you I was about to saying? say, but why, why do I have to be social? I'm not a social person unless I know you, you know, there's no point for me to just, I mean, I'm nice. Hi, how you doing? And all that, but people really need to stop personalizing that someone is offending them or don't like them or doing something to them based on them just minding their own business yeah yeah because I, I i it's funny because it's like certain settings i could go with you and i could just be off to the corner to myself enjoying myself doing what i'm doing and people probably be thinking like damn he's he's just anti-social he just he won't but you know what i'm saying that's just me you know it's crazy because we're all like that you're like that i'm like that the kids are like that but I'm having a good time. I enjoy right. myself, but some people probably would look like, damn, he's over there irritated, ready to go type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, fact, no, I'm as enjoying myself. As a matter of fact, that was. Remember, they was like, oh, he was, he was, he, they thought you was drunk out your mind. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, what? I'm I was kind of irritated by that. Like, what? Like, yeah, just First be- of all, I don't get drunk around strangers. But, but again, it's, it's annoying when people personalize your actions because they don't know you yeah, exactly. or they make an assumption that you're doing something that you don't, that you're not even doing. It's like, what? Like when people be like, oh, she's rude. I'm like, huh? Like I'm the most coolest person you'll ever come across. But it's like, because I didn't interact with you in a way that you thought I should interact with you, you personalized it and just put a jacket on me. Yes. Did the jacket fit? Not at all. No. I've been getting that jacket for years, but you know, it used to bother me. And now I'm just like, hey, it is what it is. Because I'm never going to, and this is why I love looking at things from everybody's perspective. I never walk in a room and be like this per oh, like, no, nah, I'm going to analyze you. I'm going to study. I'm not going to just assume, oh, this person, they're rude. No, nah, they just may not want to interact with you and they have all right not to. True. True. So get to the business. I just had to say that, like how we personalize 
how people's demeanors are, their characteristics are, and we just are their mannerisms and we, we take it personal. Like they have something against us when in reality, they're not even worried about you. Um, so we're going to business and personalize with business. I, um, I seen, a, I was listening to podcasts or a post or something. I forgot directly what the post I posted. Um, so it says basically you don't get what you, um, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of times people feel like because they family, friends, and they bring, try to bring that relationship when it comes to business. It's like, yeah, we cool, but this is business. So we're going to have to have a contract. We're going to have to have certain things lined up because when the friendship falls out of something, the business will still be straight. So that's what uh, separate taking things personal. It's nothing against you. If I ask you to sign a contract before we work, what do you think? My friend told me that. <laughs> I remember the first time we did, I spoke at one of her engagements. She pulled out a contract and I was like, I had to respect it though. It actually made me move the way she moved. And she was like, I never want our friendship to be, you know, in based on a disagreement that we have. So this contract is basically to make sure we stay intact as friends because everything is in writing. And then even with business, she'll basically do emails. She said, I like to do emails because we can always go back to see what was said. Yes. And text. And, no, nah, she ain't doing no, no texts when it comes to business, straight emails. And I agree with her because I delete my texts. I want it all in emails. But it made me level up as a business owner and as just being a business-minded person, period, because she was right. I couldn't even get mad at her. I actually respected it. And I started telling you, hey, we need to do these contracts because at the end of the day, what she was saying is true. So for me, I'm always, again, different perspectives. I could have took that personal and like, oh, she don't trust me. But no, what she was saying made sense. It do. Because people people want to switch up later in the game. I'm going to give you a prime example right here. Friday. You know what I'm saying? Ice Cube got the cast, paid them probably 500 bucks to act and everything. So now that the movie blows up, they feel like they deserve more money. But you you got what you negotiated. But, but even in the sense of we don't know if he knew that movie was going to be as big as it was. You know, and this is one thing that bothers me in business. The business owner is the one that puts out risk. all, they're the ones that's typically taking the risk. They're the one, because if it didn't do good, he's out, out of money, right? He's out of, and people never see it that way. Even watching um, Irv Gotti, yeah, yes. his documentary with the Shanti thing. People were like, oh, she he should give her her master's. But if, when you look at it from a business perspective, like. Irv built her. I ain't going to say that. He but built what, her. I'm going to say this. You got to look at it from his perspective, everything that he poured into, everything that he did, right? All the and risks he took. He took the risk. And that's the part that people fail to realize. It's like, oh, well, you should know. Like, if my business fails today, I'm the one that's taking the risk. You're going to go apply for another job. You're going to go somewhere else. But it's me that's left standing holding the bill or holding what I need to put back together. So this don't take it personal. It's a business. Yeah, don't take it. You shouldn't take it personal. And that's what I'm saying. You only take it personal when you're selfish because you can never see it from another person's perspective. Selfish people take everything personal Ooh, because they only they right only there. see things from their own lens. Selfish people take everything thing personal. personal. They do because they can never see what somebody else is feeling, what somebody else is thinking, what somebody else is going through. Like, let's say, for example, somebody don't hit me up. I text them. My initial thought is most people, oh, I'm not dealing with them. They, they hit me up. up. They could be busy. They could my, be going through their own my issues. My first thought would be if I deal with somebody and they don't hit me up, they must be going through something. Let me pray for them. Let me reach out. Let me send a card. Let me do something to let them know I'm here if they need me. I'm not going to be like, oh, they didn't. I'm, you know what I mean? Yes. Why do we take it so personal instead of saying, hey, you know, this person is a human. I don't know what this person is dealing with. I don't know what this person. And see, people, they think I'm crazy because I'm an ass. I'm be like, hey, you acting funny? What's going on? Yeah, I'm most people always. I'll be telling her, you just ask. wasting your breath because most people ain't gonna admit it. They're gonna lie. But this is my thing. I if, asked. This yeah. is my thing. If you have a problem with me, anybody around me knows me. Like I'm going to come to the source. I'm going to the source. So if you be like, I tell people, don't tell me such and such said. If 
if you don't want me to say anything, because I don't do the such and such said without confronting the such and such and what happened, because that's what you're saying. I'm always going to go to the source, right? I'm always going to give you the opportunity to explain yourself so we can be on the same page right now. If you lie based on what I'm asking you and I brought it to you and you choose to lie, that's on you, but I brought it to you on you. So you ask. I I'm always ask. I agree. You got to ask the source. And sometimes it just be a misunderstanding. Yeah, it'd be a misunderstanding. But some if people, I don't ask you, that means I don't thing, care. Some people take it the way they want to take it and then push it along down the road. What they, what's that old the game? This used to be like telephone or some shit. That one person says something, by the time it gets to the end, it's a whole different story. But this is, but even to that, if this, I have a, okay. I have a problem with a person having an issue with me and telling everybody with me, right? And at that point, I'm probably not going to care. Because if I have an issue with you, I'm not going to tell everybody else. And if I happen to tell somebody, I'm definitely coming to you with it. So you cannot personalize something until you even see if it's factual. You know, people be falling out with people and don't even know what they're thinking or feeling is even true or, or correct. They, yeah, what they're going through. Some people really be having going through issues and people want to take it personal. Like, oh, they they ain't talking to me. They ain't. And then, but they having their own issues. And then you will have situations too. Let's say we in the house right now. Somebody walk in here. It's 10 other people in there. Somebody throw their jacket down, roll their eyes and sit down. Somebody come to me. Hey, Sonia, did you see what she just did? She got a problem with you. Now, if I just took that, Based on what that person said and personalized that, now I got a problem with this person without even speaking to this person, without yes. even asking. I just personalized the situation. The day just had a rough day. <laughs> and it ain't even about you. And that's many times what's going on. But again, it's an inner issue. Selfish people always take things personal because they can't look outside of themselves. Mm, they need to put that on a t-shirt. Should I coin that? Should I? Should oh, yeah. I? DJ, throw a coin. That, that ain't the type of coin I meant. Should I trademark it? I'm being mm -hmm, funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. A moment of silence moment for all the whole hurt feelings out there. Nah. We gonna pray for y'all. No, I just think stop personalizing. This whole conversation started because yeah. I was saying, just analyzing the situation with the young lady and talking about the part when she said life is overrated. And it's, I just brought it up because she kept talking about it all goddamn it, day. It's like, on. how many now times you, you going to bring lying. it up? I I've said, okay, that's enough. Day. Like, goodness. I've been but every time you had day. a spare moment, you brought the story that's up. That's a lie. That's how I knew. Like, okay, That's a, that's a lie. I don't want to hear it. Because when was, I got the post, I didn't even read it. That's a lie. Like, so okay, that was my on. third. Okay. I brought it up, I think, last night after I read it. Because I didn't know who he was. I didn't know. You know what I mean? A lot of times I don't even know what's going on and on I social media. I told the people die every day, B. What? Anyway, so last night I brought it up. And not even three times. Then just now I brought it up. Because I was just sitting here thinking in my staff meeting this morning. And you just brought it up again. No. So what? In my <laughs> staff meeting this morning, uh, me and another staff member, we were because we're doing these back to school mental health assemblies. And one of the parts that we're discussing is suicide. And so it came up. And so when I was talking to the staff and he was telling me different things, it brought it up again. And I'm just thinking, you know, when she said life is overrated. And then I start thinking from a different perspective. And I'm like, why do we just assume everybody that's living should be happy? Maybe life to some people is overrated, you know? And so just thinking of it from, other people's perspective because then my mind start thinking about does that mean they're depressed like I'm not scared of death right and when I tell people I'm not scared of death because I know who I am and whose I am and doesn't scare me people are like you're crazy because most people are scared of death but does that mean I'm wrong because I'm not scared of death does that mean I'm wrong because I'm not saying life is overrated and so it just made me think of it from a different perspective like everybody in life is not going to enjoy life. Does that mean we just put depression on them? Not to say that she wasn't. I don't know if she was or she was. I'm just looking at it. For if somebody came to me and was like, hey, like, I don't really like life. Like, some people be like, hey, I really don't like being an adult. Because I could get what you're saying, because some people could live with that, just like you in a marriage and you're not happy in your marriage, but you stay in that marriage. 
you know what I'm saying? So I can understand what the point you're coming from. Like, if you you don't, if life is overrated, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like some Doesn't people mean, say, you know what I'm saying? Sex yeah. is overrated. Does yeah. that mean something is wrong with them? No, they just may not like sex like that. And so it just made my mind start processing, like, why do we think because when people don't think like us that it's abnormal or something is wrong? You know, you have people like they don't like being an adult. They don't like the responsibility that comes with being an adult because life is not an easy journey. But does that mean that there is something wrong with me or does that mean I'm processing and I'm analyzing what this life? I remember at one point I was like, dang, I should have never had kids. Not because I don't love my kids, but I, I just start thinking like all the stuff they have to endure in this life, you know, is so chaotic, is so crazy, is so demonic. And so that's where my mind was going is why I brought it up again. And he was like, oh, you need to stop personalizing. I wasn't personalizing it. I was trying to see it from her perspective so, and through so, her lens. So so if a family member tells somebody life is overrated, you shouldn't, a red flag shouldn't pop up? I'm, no, 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 no. I'm not saying a red flag should pop up, but I think you should have a conversation. I'm not saying that she wasn't depressed. I don't know. Her. I don't know if she was or not. That could be depression. Depression, but let's say an older person, they may say they done lost their mate. They've been single all their life. They're 80, 90 years old. They're like, I'm ready to go. Are they wrong to say that? They may really be ready to go. I mean, shit, they live the life. I mean. But even if you 25, like it all depends on your, your thought process behind it. Of course, I'm going to go spiritually. Wouldn't, but wouldn't that be considered of now we got to put you on suicide watch because you're, you're saying you're ready to go. I mean. You could really kill yourself. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't think anybody should kill themselves. I always think that's the plot of the enemy is spiritual. The enemy is always going to But they already got their own. mind. If you're already thinking, I'm ready right. to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's what I'm saying. It's No, 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 no. Listen to what I'm saying. To take your life, obviously, that's completely spiritual, right? The enemy has basically tricked you and gamed you to believe that you don't need to be here. That you're not valuable. And, and a person like that, I'll always go back from a spiritual perspective. You had to be a major threat and impact in this world for God, for the enemy to try to psych you out and take you out. I'm going to always believe that. Because if you wasn't, he wouldn't care. You wouldn't be a threat to go. He wouldn't try to take you. But what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that a person goes and killed himself. That was just that situation. I'm saying like if a person was having a, a analytical conversation, like I'm saying I'm not scared to death. I don't have to be on suicide watch because I'm not going to go kill myself, but I'm letting you know death doesn't scare me. So basically me. A, a conversation, not a person that doesn't get out the bed and stay No, I'm in not talking about somebody that's saying depressed. saying certain phrases No, I'm not saying like, that somebody, I'm just saying like if somebody was have like- Have a general conversation. Yeah. Hey, you know, life is not fulfilling without depressive thoughts and they're really having a, because there's people out here that really believe that. That doesn't mean they're going to go jump off a building. That just means- they're analyzing and they're processing like, hey, life is not fun for me. Because you got to think like this. Happiness is an inner issue, right? That's that's internal. A lot of times we look for external stimuli, entertainment, social media, a relationship, a food. face TV. Yeah, we look for external stimuli. So happiness comes from within. But sometimes... That stimuli word sounds sexy as much. Say it again. Oh my goodness. Say stimuli. No. So... <laughs> Forget it. You just made me forget my train of thought. <laughs> I sidetracked it. Don't get mad at me. It's still a lie. I mean, you, you love using them big words around me. Like, That's you know what I'm saying? It's still a lie. Uh, she's, right now, we want to take a moment because she, she's trying to regain her thoughts because I sidetracked her. Because you went all into that. Because thing. I just, that's what I was thinking when you said it and you kept saying it. Goodness. So get back to what you were saying. I mean, goodness. So basically what I was saying is happiness is internal, right? That's something that someone can't give you happiness. A, a, a object or a possession cannot bring you happiness. It's something that comes from within. But there are some people that they just may not be happy, right? And they have to find that. But what I'm saying is to have a thought-provoking conversation, like I feel like we're having now, so you brought up the whole sexy stuff, Um does that mean I'm wrong? Because I'm like, yeah, I'm not scared of death. No, it just means that I'm not. So I don't think we should label people. And that's, again, that's an isolated incident. I'm not referring to that. I don't know that girl. That something is abnormal or something is wrong about this person because they think different from societal norms. Because, again, like I said about my kids, when you look at this world, it's like. It's chaotic to some and it's normal to others. 
True. You know what I'm saying? It's all about and what it's peace- you on. And, and it's peaceful to others. Because let me say this, and I want to be clear. My life is peaceful. But my life is peaceful because I believe life is simple. We just make it complicated because your worldview is based on your lens and how you view things. And that's and why. What you intake. Yes. There you go. And that's why I don't like certain stuff in my spirit. I don't like to watch certain stuff, hear certain stuff. Because it does something to me spiritually. So when you say don't personalize, I'm not personalizing. Like even with certain stuff, like when uh, the situation when they were rioting and, you know, Black Lives Matter, when all them, those deaths were happening, like I had to turn that off. Like because it, it start putting me in a certain headspace. Like I was getting angry. I'm like, look, this is enough. I know enough to understand what's going on in the world, but I also know I don't have to uh, swallow and eat everything that's coming on you, TV. You, you know your limits. You need to control your limits. It's like being a um, drinking. You know your limits, so you should control how much you eat. I think you should always be aware of what's going around you, but I don't think you should consume it so much that that's all that you're intaking. You need to learn to turn stuff off so you don't personalize it. Because when I was watching that stuff, I was becoming angry. And I had to say, Sydney, check this out. Like you live in a world full of chaos, you know what's going on, what it is. But at the end of the day, you cannot let this in your spirit. And that even goes back to like our last podcast, that access, you know, you can't even give information access to you to basically be in your, your mind like that, to basically take over your emotions. And that's why I can say I'm at peace because I don't allow myself to feed myself certain stuff and people be like oh you're oblivious you just want to close your eyes and turn no, a blind that's, eye that's like, like some no i'm aware of what's going on some people say they don't watch the news you know what i'm saying because they don't want to know what's, what's going on this i want to be aware of what i need to be aware of right but once you're aware of it you don't have to keep watching it over and, and every over point of view and yeah. over and over because at some point it's going to take an emotional toll where some emotion is is going to come out some emotion is going to be felt. And it's like, for me to have peace, I don't need, even when there's certain things is happening to Christians around the world or they're being persecuted, I intake so much and then I give it back to God. And then I go pray about it because at the end of the day, I can't let that type of stuff overwhelm me. And just being in the field that I'm in, we see a lot, you know, we hear a lot. And I had to even get to the point where I could basically, after a session, turn it off and go. Because, you know, my my clients, they share stuff with me. I'm a person. I want to see my clients win. I'm not just sitting like, oh, I'm just listening to their life stories. Like, no, I genuinely care and want to see them win. You know, and so I may pray for them after a session. They don't know I'm praying for them, but I always want to see them, you know, thrive and have the best. So it's some stuff that I'm like, man, you know what I mean? And I had to learn to separate it. But when I was a therapist in the beginning of my career, I couldn't. And it was days I went home crying. I remember when I worked at, uh, this was before I was a therapist. I wanted to adopt a kid. Then oh, I had to yeah. think I'm like, like, you better go sit your ass down. Then yeah. I'm like, you know, I can't <laughs> bring this kid into my home with my kids. I oh, had to use man, logic. She ain't lying too. Cause she did want to bring this little boy home. I was like, you better get the hell out of here. <laughs> and I had to use reason like, okay, like, you know, he's going through some stuff, but then how's that going to be detrimental and affect my kids? But I'm always wanting to see people heal and, you know, to see them do better. But yeah, you, but I don't think you should personalize it again, but you have to have compassion. And it scares me. Let me tell you something. Without compassion, you can go blow somebody's brains out and not care. Without compassion, you could basically knock out a 60 year old woman and not care. Without compassion, you basically can molest the kid and not care. And that's why I'm like, you always got to have some sense of compassion because compassion will stop you. Trust me, when I was living a life, it's a whole lot of stuff that people would have got it. Trust me, like for real, for real. But my heart wouldn't let me do it. My heart wouldn't let other people do it because that compassion always kept me grounded. Like, I can't do that. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we're going on that one. That compassion. She went deep on compassion, (laughs) y'all. That could have been a whole podcast topic, compassion, instead of personal. She done personalized this and turned this to compassion. Because I do think you need to have compassion. Yes, you need, if everybody had compassion, it wouldn't be crime around here. And that's the problem. People don't, like, to, if you can walk up to somebody and blow their brains out and not think, that's scary to me. Like, nothing in you, but, like, you but just. Wouldn't that fall into, some of this is mental illness. 
Everything ain't mental illness. Man, now I get tired. I'm in the mental so the health walk, field. No, the walking up to somebody and blow their hair, head off is not part of some type of mental illness that person going listen, through. Listen, like, come on now. Listen, there's people that's it's it's a disrespect to people that are suffering with mental health issues and they thrive every day and they make the conscious effort to make the everybody's right not the same. Everybody's listen, not. The everybody's same. not the same. But some people are consciously making decisions to do what they want to do. Because something Everything, that hurt them that they dealing with is making them no, make that decision. Listen, let's say I got angry, right? What That ain't mental health issues. That's critical thinking skills to where you get so angry that you just stop thinking, right? Because something triggered you to get that angry. Okay. So That's the point. Something triggered something you to get that did, angry. Something did trigger you. But we not some things you just need to learn critical thinking problem solving. Okay, skills. but where's the okay, compassion so at? Where's the compassion okay, okay, at? Okay, for example, for example, you getting beat up, right? But I'm I'm old school. You get beat up, you get beat up, you come back, you fight. That video with the girl, she's getting beat up and not even getting beat up bad. I think she was more embarrassed than beat up. You at work, you pull out your gun and start shooting this lady because she beat you up. You that mad because she beat you up? I mean, and she didn't even beat she you probably, up. Probably, but this is we but don't know her even, history. She probably got abused by her mom okay, or her daddy. Or something. That is we don't true. know what triggered that her. That is true. You know what I'm saying? We don't know her background. It could be associated to a mental health issue. But what I'm saying is, everything that happens in crime is not a mental health issue. I would give it more. I give spiritual more power than than mental health. You know what I mean? I just think we feed that to oh, it's mental. Health. Like no. It's you making dumb decisions. Some stuff is you need to be responsible and accountable for your actions. There's people that's riding around thinking who they're going to rob, who they're going to kill, who they're going to You're th- This premeditated. Okay, well, I'm not. Robin is not mental health. No. I just, Why? Yeah. Why that ain't mental because health? Because Robin is just, it falls back to what you were saying. It's selfish. You know what I'm saying? You want what somebody else have without working for it. Okay, but, but even the, trying to the, shoot somebody the, the, the is murders, selfish. To murder somebody behind over nothing. I think it's some issues but with that But you person. almost murdered a lady behind nothing because I think your your pride was bruised because she didn't even beat you up. Back. Okay, some like, of but, it, but like you, you just said, we don't know her personal background. We don't know so her what background. Triggered, cause certain we things, don't. You, 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 I'm, I'm going to go, go back to you because you, you over here trying to play that role. But back in your day, you used to say you blacked out. I blacked out one okay, time. Okay, you blacked out. So you don't know what triggers and cause that person to black out Hold and on. do things but that they, they, not ain't, blacking they out. constantly thinking okay, of doing. On. You but know what I'm saying? Let's be clear. Let's be clear. I was in self-preservation mode. This girl was like three times bigger than me, way taller than me. So you're exactly right. But I you're went blacked in, out. But listen, you did but, things but that listen, you, you But listen you know to what, what I'm saying. saying. So but listen to what I'm saying. I was in survival mode. So basically, so you, how you know she wasn't in survival mode? That because, she just felt like she got no, beat up and you, she blacked out you, and pulled no, that gun out. You, you wasn't popping. in survival mode because you're going back and forth with her, right? You running your mouth, you sitting but there you arguing don't know with somebody. What happened when a person go black? So then, listen, you went black. I'll see. I'm telling you, you don't know what you're doing when your everything is black. So you don't. She probably didn't even know that she grabbed the gun and started popping. Why do you have a gun at work? Let's let's start there. Because it's a rough ass neighborhood. If you just then say you, how these people you, listen, are robbing everything, listen. listen. <laughs> Even for the expense of money, I'm never going to put myself in a situation. If I have to feel like I have to take a gun there, I don't want to be there. If I feel like I have to, and I tell you this all the time, if I feel like you have to carry or we have to be in a position where a gun needs to be in play, I don't even want to be there. You never know when you need a gun. You never know. I'm not Niggas saying you got popped at church. No, 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 no. And I tell you, they wasn't bringing saying, the gun to church. They got, I'm not saying you shouldn't have it. Because obviously, where we at after COVID 2020, the world has just got ballistic. But what I'm saying, if I consciously have to feel like I got to be on edge no, and I got to be hyper vigilant, like. if you constantly feel like some shit there. might pop off, I don't you shouldn't be there. there. You know what I'm saying? Because you know when, like, okay, we're going through this situation, some shit might pop off. You shouldn't go. You know what I'm saying? But say not to carry a gun. I mean, you got the right to carry a gun. And shoot. You shouldn't have a gun at people, work. And you shouldn't have a gun at church, but people died and, and they didn't have a gun at church. But this So you is never what know saying. when these people with mental illness I'm not will saying, pop off anywhere. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a gun at church, but what I'm saying is legally, you shouldn't even have a gun at work. Apparently, we don't know what state that was, and she was probably all right to carry a gun at that location. No, I ain't no job telling you you could carry no gun. Like, come on now. Unless it depends on what type of field you're in, you're not carrying no gun 
Now, I wouldn't have a problem with my therapist if they had concealed and carried it. I'm not going to even lie. But the type of field we're in, you don't know what type of person you coming and across. She, and she didn't know what type of person that came in that store. So you 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 basically validated your reason, but not her reason. It's more people no. coming through the convenience store than the therapists. And these okay. people coming through the, the convenience store, is, and then she's a the woman. The difference is at a store, you're basically in the store with multiple people. But I'm just saying, you As can't a judge, therapist, judge a person you are by, locked by their in a room. Guy. We're not locked in a room. You're one on one. If I have an intake and I'm meeting with a, I don't know who this dude is. I don't know. I mean, we have safety precautions to where everything we are supposed to do. We don't know if this person is hallucinating. We don't know if this person is on drugs. We don't know what type of person we're coming across, and we're directly in a room with this person. Same thing in the convenience store. Well, I'm gonna agree to disagree, but that's a different story. Not to say that you know any of my therapists have guns. Let's just make that clear. But if they had a concealed and carry, it wouldn't be an issue for me. Y'all hear that? Same thing at the, the convenience store. But uh, let's so uh, you know. Let me take that back because somebody let me scratch that because honestly, I probably would just have like armed security because putting a gun in somebody's hand. Period. You just don't know what they will do and how they react. And some people overreact. Yes. For situations that don't make sense or get emotional and take it personal. No, you, you should never get emotional and shoot somebody. Yeah, some people, that's just but some crazy. people take things personal. Now, if a therapist you know what I'm got emotional and shot, they like you should have never been in the field. But then again, that goes back to why I said no. I, I would never. I had to retract my statement because you know how somebody is professionally. People put on masks, and then you talk to different people, and you get an idea of how these people are outside of work. You never know who you're really dealing with. Because again, I'm an employer. You're never really going to show me your true face. And so I don't know who you are. And for business, why just hiring an outside agency is just more safer? Well, we on a whole other time. That don't even matter because it ain't going to happen at my place of employment, but whatever. Yeah. She actually took it personally and went to her place of employment. No, I was just making an example. <laughs> Once again, people have to and take everything Let me be personal. clear. Nothing has ever everything happened at personal. my place we of business. We understand that. We understand I that, I am Sanin. clearly making but an we example. Just saying, we, you're just saying how we're talking about a certain topic and how people make it personal to them. No, I'm, I'm that was resonating. A, that's resonating. I'm relating the conversation. Let me tell you something. Everybody's different, right? And so to me, to make a point, and I think, be, well, the difference is I'm a speaker, you're not. So when I speak- I'm speaking right now. Y'all hear me? Okay, my check, whatever. my check. When I yeah, go yeah, out yeah. and speak and speak at events, the way I grab the attention of the audience is basically to make them resonate by telling my story. And so to me, I'm a storyteller to basically engage people. So it's not like I'm personalizing it. I'm giving you a visual and example of what I'm saying. <laughs> Got Don't it. do that again. Got it. Because you were trying to validate that point. Because you always be trying to take <laughs> stuff out of context and turn it into something that's completely not. All right, y'all. So that was, we're going to start wrapping this one up. Why? That, it's actually a good topic. Because how many, much stuff are we going to get personal with? Because I'm. what else was is there a person? We went to business, internet, social media, family. Is there anything else people take personal? Dating? How people take dating personal? Oh. They get ghost? <laughs> yeah, people do take that personal, but I'm not dating. So, uh, I mean, I could elaborate on it, but not, don't really. I mean, if you get ghosted when you're dating, I don't think you should take it personal. I think you should take it as a win. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. that wasn't the person you were supposed to be with. And I wouldn't like feel bad about myself because at the end of the day if this is the type of person that you're dealing with you, you may not want to deal with them yes. yeah so sometimes you got to use logic because if reasoning. he ghosts you in the, and while y'all dating most definitely he's gonna ghost your kids well the person may not even have kids but the point is sometimes a closed door is not always a bad thing it's a good thing but i was going to say taking a personal life with um um, from an employer's perspective, like for example, like I didn't realize being an employer, I had to basically delegate my time evenly. You know, people take that personal, like, like you, you walk, delegate like delegate your time. You walk in the office, and it's been a problem in the past. And I was just like, not even thinking of it like that. Like, oh, she's speaking to this person. This person's a favorite. She's like, what? Like we're grown, but people really take, take that okay. personal. Like, oh, the CEO is in here talking to this person and, and they're not talking to me or they told them hi. And I'm like, 
But as an employee, as a staff, as whatever, you can't take stuff like that personal. You have to understand that these are probably the best conversation with my son yesterday. We talked like over an hour and he was like, mom, I realize you and dad, you guys are just people. And I was like, what? First, I'm like, what you saying? I told him I'm a God. No, you ain't no God. God is God. But anyways, he said, I had to come to terms with you guys are people. And he said, it made me look at you as a person. We all got flaws. And he said, I had to understand that you guys go through the same things I go. And it, and we had, we had a good conversation. I love my kids. I would sit and talk to my kids for hours. And so that's the same thing. Like being an employer, you got to understand that employer is a person. And so it's nothing personal. They just may be talking about a certain topic or situation or something that a person is doing. That doesn't mean they like you less. That just means they're having dialogue with someone and you can't take that personal. But some places it is favorites at the office. I, I don't have lie. favorites. You know what I'm saying? Some people could get away with more shit than others. So, you know, well, but not at the office, but I'm saying that certain jobs, because I had a lot of jobs. But look, but look, you know but look at the end of the, of the day. What are you there for? That right? paycheck. I, no. I, I you either. Know, you asked me what I'm there for. I'm there for that. It paycheck. was a rhetorical question. It wasn't meant for you to answer. Saying, make sure you put that subtitle up then. So this is the thing. You have to know what you're there for at a job. I knew when I was there to build and I knew when I was there just to be there for the moment. And so I've never taken like, oh, this super, but I didn't care. You know, because what are you there for? Because if you're worried about how much how much someone speaks to you, you got to question your own motives. Amen. Because why do you care? I've never cared whether a supervisor talked to me or not. Because some people like the brown nose. You know, that's what I. And let me tell you, I used to see. I never brown nose. My work performance used to be off the chain. I let my work do my 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 what they say. My work do all the talking. While other people know they ain't good at their job, so they like the brown nose and basically get getting good like that. So I'm just saying, like some people, and again, and, and, and so again, when you don't give them that thing, they feel like, oh, she, they. Ain't. But again, so it's your, your checking motives, your motives. motives. Why do you want to talk to this person so much? If I'm having a conversation with you, it's genuine. I don't want anything from you or anything from it. We just having good. First of all, if you know me. I like thought provoking conversations. I will talk to you for hours if you're really talking about something, if it's making me think and inspire me and provoking thought. Right. So you have to go back to your own motive, your selfishness. Why do I want this person to talk to me? Mm. Let's give y'all a uh, coin on that one. Why are you trying to be seen? No, my bad. Why are you trying to be heard and talk? I don't think you want to be heard. I think a lot of times people want to be and and talk to the employer because it's like, I want, I want you to see me. Yeah. But you want to say me as an employer, the best way you're going to allow me to see you is through your work at the conversation means nothing. Hey man. Drop a coin for me. You're going to drop a coin. Somebody going to be listening to this going to get hard on the grind. Like shit, I'm going to work hard. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've always... Well, you got to respect work ethic, though. Yeah, you know conversation. I don't care how much I like you as a person. If your work ethic is garbage, that's what I'm looking at. You can have the best conversation in the world. Mm-hmm. But you ain't producing. You got to produce. Mm-hmm. A lot of warehouse jobs I didn't produce. You just got... You know what I'm saying? I just ran the check up and got on to the next. So you're an employee I would never want. Yeah, I know. I used to do a whole lot of stuff when I used to work. I never did that. I always pulled my weight and did what I needed no, to. No, I pulled... Well, you know, it depends on the job or the respect. Warehouse jobs, I already knew they was trying to Don't milk me. So I'm going to milk that's them. that's listening right now. But you know what I'm saying? It depends job. on... What is... I ain't saying nothing bad about warehouse jobs. I'm no, saying okay. when I was at the warehouse and unloading them trailers, I used to milk it, chill, and then produce the um, production line. But hey... I was working through a temp service. So if I wasn't good enough to get hired on, you wasn't going to get my full potential of work. That's how I thought. I don't know. I always thought I'm going to bring my best foot forward. I, I did that. You know, I ain't going to lie. I did my best. You know what I'm saying? And my feelings got hurt because they fired me. Uh, it was like, <laughs> I remember if that. If y'all hit this, pregnant with if they decided. hit this production, we're going to hire you on to the company. So I'm out there busting my ass, doing the job, boom, boom. So next thing and I you was know, pregnant too. The, uh, temp service, we gonna we gonna cut y'all and we gonna bring in new temps. 
I was like, you motherfuckers. And from that day on, I never gave my food potential at a fucking job. I milked them. You mean that attempt? That attempt, service yeah, warehouse. Really yeah, it's like so I learned I learned the system. Too. It's like they would they would say anything to motivate you false dreams that they oh we're gonna hire the people that do this and that but when you do it but they're just gonna the wash thing. you out but this is the thing and i always tell my staff this everything i say i produce and if i haven't produced it yet i'm in the process of making it happen right so you got to know your employer based on watch their actions you can't sell me a dream your actions have to align with what you're saying well i got sold a dream a few times well, that was this one too. this one job i was graphic design this one company i ain't gonna say their name because they probably ain't around no more so basically, they they brought me in as a temp, gave me an assignment, and I was That's so when I, was I was so good at the assignment. I did all the work, boom, 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 and I I worked myself out of the job because I did it so damn fast. Because he was he was making it seem like okay, we're gonna hire you on as a graphic designer for the company, but I did all the work so fast. Oh, we don't need you now. Can I you said, know? you motherfucker. So I hid all the files that I um. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I, I, that I did. I, you You're know what I'm saying? Yourself. I hid all the files. So basically, they sued the temp service because the, the, the work and shit. I was like, oh, you well, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. Shout out to that company. I hope you got the files. <laughs> but go on, man. We, we, no. on, we on what? You still got more to say? Uh, no, but this was a, most of the time, this is crazy. The reason why we busting out podcast episodes so much because we'll literally be sitting down having a conversation i'm like hey let's put this on a podcast like we having this whole dialogue about this stuff so we might as well record it and i always be told her it's about content content we might have two viewers today but shit we might have a hundred next year honestly i don't really care about the viewers and i'm being honestly serious this is my thing this is my philosophy in life Okay, no man or woman close or open the door to God is already destined for me. So for me, I'm just doing this because I actually enjoy this. I told you we was actually having a conversation. I'm like, hey, let's get on the podcast. So if nobody's listening, I'm enjoying just having a conversation with my husband. We just so Please. happen to be recording. Coins, coins. And me, I'm just, I always like to plant seeds because I know throwing seeds around everywhere, something going to grow. And on that note, we going to tune on now and thank y'all for tapping in. Make sure y'all follow, like, subscribe, wherever you see this at. And you can find me on I Am Grindface on every platform. You can find her at? Sunia Mayo, everything. Once again, we out. Bye.